All right. So um, going to the, the basic um, Python programming, we have variables, this guy here, and then we have values. Values are basically what's restoring variables. Just like when you're looking at your cobalt, that's, uh, you can imagine it as a space where the computer keeps the values that you put in, and that's how it works. So we just use the first one to illustrate. So we have number one, it's 93, number two, it's 25. So when I run this code, you can see that when we add number one and number two, it gives us one and eight. All right, let me put this down out and then let me, okay, it doesn't give anything because we commented, that's one way we commented. So let's see what the computer stores number one, 93, that's what it gives us here. And um, let me uncomment it. Uh, so it stores the number two as, 25. If you notice, you'll see that it completely ignores number one, right? So let's comment number two out there. Let's see. So that's how it works. And um, it completely ignored the answer that we gave here. So let's uh, comment it. And yeah, it doesn't give us anything. So it gives us the number. So when we want to do a multiplication, we use the sign here, this little sign here. And when we run it, we have 2 into 3, 24. So that's what we have there. Then we want to divide it, we get 3.72 that's a float. And when we want to convert it to the nearest um, integer, we use a double um, slash here. Then uh, we want to print a message. Uh, we use this, but there's a very cool way of um, of doing it. Mm, this is a cool way of writing. And let's say we want to store someone's name as uh, Billy. I can write hello, hello, sorry, hello, hello Billy. So. Mm -hmm. so. We should be able to get something different. Oh, an error. It's bringing an error. What is it say? Invalid syntax. All right, so that's everything for you. I used the wrong syntax for this question. So let's try it again. All right. Nice. So it printed both the first message and the second message. Isn't that cool? And look at it, hello, Dilly. And I think this, this is a very good way of um, writing your Python stuff. I can imagine, uh, we can do something. We can do something, let's do something. We can um, ask for a user's name, then greet the user, and that's what we'll do later in the, in the chapter. So moving on, we have uh, an escape number. This just means an extra line. And when we want this, it shows us first line and then the second line. Then uh, if we want to get two um, digits and say the answer is three. Now, this answer goes to the last uh, computed value, which is three. That's why it gives us three. So if I want this particular one and I come here to run this particular one, it saves it as a new value. So you see uh, 3.72 as the new value. So moving on, yeah, we can call for a user. To enter a text and then we can let's say let's use f strings to um uh, uh okay the value you sorry you entered is text yeah text value so ask the um we ask the the user to enter a text value and then we <laughs> oh boy all right let's see let's say it's 34 and what does it tell us? So look how I said, the value you entered is 34. Isn't that cool? So instead of using print, you can use an F string and then voila, it performs the same thing and it allows you to place um, all the right uh, stuff in it. Now, the, the, the beauty of this comes in when you're trying to mail 5,000 people and you want to use, um, you want to personalize the mail for each person. That's where you get um, the value of this and it makes your work very beautiful. So we can move straight to the next one. It's called, uh, okay, the anti point seven two. So it picks the last one. So here we have um, two digits, just like the first one. So we call it X and Y, but X and Y is greatly discouraged in programming. Why? Because uh, we call them magic numbers. We call them uh, X is unknown, Y is unknown. So it must uh, very because we don't write programs. So beyond writing programs for the computer, to run, we actually write programs so that the next person that may handle it, maybe leave the company. So another one uh, will have no issues um, locating what the variable X or the variable Y means. So um, this is greatly discouraged by programming. So then uh, this one talks about um, casting. Uh, we pick the input from the user, any 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 input from the user, and then we cast it to an int. Now we told the user to enter a number. That's the instruction. Now if a, number, a user enters something that's completely different, we can have an error. So let's run it and demonstrate that fact. Because okay, let's say I don't want to put a number. I want to be disobedient user. So look what it's giving me. First, this is what it says: value error. Why? Because it's expecting an int. So if it since it doesn't see an int, it quickly tells me, oh, you have an error in line one. This is the number. This is the equation you gave me. The value invalid literal for int with base 10. So it's telling me, um, sorry, I can't find any number that has this value as jiggy, jiggy, well, all right, it's good. So sorry, computer, I'll give you what you want. So I'm giving the number. So I gave him that number. I want to be mischievous here. So uh, let me put it decimal and then put some number. So let's see. Oh, it's crying. What is it? Value error, most weekends, most recent call last. Then it tells me um, int, input, enter a number. Okay, this is what it says. Uh, invalid literal for int with base 10. So you can't find uh, a number that has a decimal with base 10. So it's telling you that, oh, this number you gave me is not an integer. It's a float. It's another of the types that we have in Python. So that's why it's given that error. So um, I'm going to try it the last time, but this time I'm going to be a good boy. <laughs> All right. So let's see. 34. Good. So it completely uh, accepted the instruction. So the code runs perfectly. So 
Yet quickly talks about uh, loops. Now this is what we do um, daily. Uh, it talks about flows, controls. Example, uh, it starts here, then it meets a, a junction where it asks a question. Um, the number I get is it greater than 10? If it is yes, all right, good. This is over. The number is 10. This is over 10. So it's telling you the number is over 10. Okay, if the number is over, it's not greater than 10. So it tells you, mm, let me move to the next decision. Is this number equal to 10? If it is no, it ignores it and moves straight. It says this is under 10. And then it moves on. But if it's a yes, it tells you, oh, this number is equal to 10. And then it starts. And this is what is represented here as this um, variable. That's it that is given is contrasted against this one. If it is greater, this actually means greater than. So we print. We can actually put this f strings here. We're not using print. I think it will work. Think you? Nah, it will work. But it might just confuse the next uh, developer. We can just replace this with f strings. And it should work. All right, my this is the universe of housewife. All right, so um, it picks the last number. That's number one. I want to be mysterious here, so I'm going to change it to number 23. I was already complaining that, hey, you didn't tell me anything about number 23. So, okay, let me be a good boy. All right, so number two. He's already telling me, hey, number two is 25, so let's try it. Immediately, I send it. Nothing is printed out. Are you kidding me? Let's try it again. Okay, the reason why nothing is printed out is because though I made this a string, which is beautiful, I did not use the return value. So if I use the return value, let's see whether it's gonna work. Fingers crossed, people. Fingers crossed. So, let's see. Will it work? Please give me an error. So this is what it said. Return is outside. Oh. Is it? All right. All right. So do what is it? Return can only be used within a function. Hmm. All right. So this is the part I'm going to cut out. <laughs> okay. So what is? So F string here didn't work. All right. Let's see if we can cover F string with um the print function. Oh, sorry. Say uh, print. Explain this together, guys. So we say print here. And then the last one, print. So let's see. Please work. We give an error. Hmm. So let's see. Why is it giving us this is 10? So it actually works with the other one. So, but f is greater than 10. Okay, this is why it's saying this is 10. But actually, what we should have written is this is greater than 10. And we can, we can make it very cool. This is where we uh, actually have one. We can say number two is greater than 10. Sorry, he's already complaining. Guy, he didn't tell me that I have number two. So let's we can put it like this. And then just replace it. So it immediately tells us the, the number. And uh, this is cool. This makes programming much beautiful. So let's see. Look at what he's telling us. 25 is greater than 10. Awesome, right? So that's that's it. Um, I want to be mysterious here. Yeah, I just, um, let me put it here. All right, good, sir. Um, I'm going to call um, number two here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to call number two. Yeah, I'm going to call it. Let's say, uh, let's say three. I want to see what happens. So it says three is, three is hmm, it's number 10. No, no, we just say less than, let's say less than 10. So what the, the condition is, if two is greater than 10, we say, if the value is greater than 10, we say, oh, it's greater than 10. If it is equal to 10, we say it's equal to 10. And if it is, or we just say it's less than 10. So, so let's run it again. Look how it says, oh, it's less than 10. So let us make it 10 this time. All right, so I said, starting it and then running it. Let's see, it's less than 10. No, this is wrong. What is happening? But look at our code. Our code was wrong. Did you see? So it's compare number one. So uh, we'll not do that. So let's, let's start again. Good, 10 is equal to 10. So, so it's always right when the programmer uses the right um, function. So thank you for listening.